Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video, I'm going to go over the operation of our Cubase MIDI controller for Stream Deck devices package. Now, I assume that you've gone through the PDF that was included in the download and followed the instructions on the installation there, or you've watched our installation video. And uh, if you have not, I have the link uh, in the description below. But once you're set up, this is the main page that you're presented with. Now I'm going to be uh, demonstrating this on an Excel device. Most of the functions are available on the 15 key, so you can follow along with, with no problem here. Additionally, I'll be demonstrating this on a Mac system, but all the features and functions are identical on the Windows profile. So this is the main profile page that you're, you're going to first see. Now of course along the bottom here are the transport functions. So we have a uh, add an audio track and add an instrument track. Now this middle set of keys here is a track selection row. This represents tracks one to eight in our current project. And you can see the name of the track is also listed here below. So clicking on any one of these is obviously just going to select that track. So when you have a track selected here, this fader will now affect the volume of this currently selected track. So in this case, we have our bass clean selected. So moving it up and down, we'll move up and down our volume fader. And of course, the one beside it is the master, and it, of course, controls the master fader. Now, if you find that these faders are moving either too fast or too slow, you can easily adjust those. So let's pop over to Stream Deck software. And let's say we want to adjust the selected track fader speed. Click on either the top or bottom, doesn't matter which one at this point, and you'll see you're presented with this dialog. Now along the bottom here we have a slider, and we can just simply move this down to slow it down. This is controlling the fader knob going down, and this will control the fader knob going up. So they should match fairly closely. So we're going to take this one down as well. Now we go back to Cubase and adjust the selected track fader. You can see it moves a lot slower. So you can adjust this to how it works best for you. In addition, we have the ability for our selected track to invoke mute, solo, read, and write. So clicking any one of these is going to react with the software. So that gives us the ability to control tracks one to eight. Well, as you can see in my project, I have 13 tracks here. So how do we access tracks nine to 13? Well, that's where the bank buttons come in up here. So hitting bank forward now moves everything down so that my tracks nine to 13 are now available. You can see uh, track nine is strings. Strings is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Track number eight is my tambourine. So when I press back, you can see tambourine is now back down to slot number eight on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the track buttons here will just take our selected track and move it one forward or one back. Just like so. Now one word of note here about the uh, track names. The stream deck needs to be sent the information from the application. So what that means is I can change the name of a, of a track here, change it to something else like harp, and you'll see that it updates on the Stream Deck. But if I had reason to restart Stream Deck and leave my application open, and I'll restart Stream Deck. So we've restarted Stream Deck, but you'll find when we go back into Cubase, because our application has, has always been open, but Stream Deck has restarted, you'll see that we don't have any names here. We have function, but we don't have track names. That's because the application needs to send the names to Stream Deck, but Stream Deck started after the application would have sent them. So you can see I can, I can change uh, our, our track five here. I can change the name back to guitar and it will show up on our Stream Deck device because that information is now being sent. The very quick fix about that is to just quit Cubase 
and just do a quick restart. And you'll see all your names come back because the application has now sent that information via MIDI to the Stream Deck and the Stream Deck has read it. So just keep that in mind that it's always best that the Stream Deck stays functioning while you're working with the application, particularly when the application starts up. That information will get sent to the Stream Deck. Okay, continuing on with the page, on the top here we have our LCD display that shows our, our time or bars. And of course we have metronome control. And this uh, button here is our console page. So this will open up the uh, mixer console uh, on Stream Deck, plus a few more pages. And here we have our mixer console page. Now this of course has uh, dedicated tracks uh, one through eight for our fader. So we can move any of the faders for any of the tracks that we have listed here. And once again, the, uh, the bank controls can take us to the next bank of eight tracks. So you can keep going through, no matter how many different banks of uh, tracks you have, you can keep cycling through them. And of course we have the solo function for each of the tracks here. Now this key is our mute solo arm page. Clicking on that gives us access to the solo, mute, and arm for each of these tracks. And the next page over is our pan page. When pan is activated here and set up in green, we can now control the pan pots of our individual channels. So pressing the top pot takes it clockwise, the bottom pot takes it counterclockwise. So we can pan right and pan left. Moving back, we have an EQ page. So clicking on this and pressing EQ to make sure that EQ is active, I'm going to select our drum track here. So we can control the EQ of the currently selected track. So with drums selected, and uh, let, let's just solo the drums at the moment. When we click on the channel settings, up pops our channel settings dialog and we have the EQ window open. Let's just make a few points. Now I'll just make a quick little move here so we can see more dynamically what we're doing. Now while we're playing we can adjust our values. And we can adjust multiple values at the same time. So that gives you easy access to the EQ and being able to control multiple parameters at the same time. Now one additional troubleshooting note you might encounter is that occasionally you might find that the Stream Deck uh, stops being responsive. Uh, the MIDI controls aren't working anymore and you get error messages like this or even the graphics don't show up. Now this is a known problem with how Stream Deck uses MIDI and it hasn't been fixed yet. But there is uh, a, a very simple workaround to avoid this happening, and that is you should always try and have your Stream Deck directly connected to your computer. So don't use a USB hub. Go straight from the Stream Deck into the computer, and that tends to make a much more stable MIDI connection. So if you have to go through a USB hub, you probably are going to find that this will occasionally go offline on you. So the fix to get everything back online is very simple. You just go back to uh, Stream Deck software, go back into the store, and uh, into plugins, search for the MIDI again, click uninstall, wait for it to do the uninstall process, and then immediately install it again. Now you may find you'll have to restart Stream Deck. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So when you go back to your application, you'll find that things will work as they did before. But once again, the best approach is to make a direct connection from the Stream Deck to the computer and avoid using a USB hub for its connection. 
So that's it. That's all you need to know. I hope that really helps in your workflow and, and uh, makes your life in the studio a lot easier. Thanks once again. We'll talk to you soon.